40 years back. I was about to go to Cancer Bats then. G'day, I'm Craig Bradley. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm not an amazingly haired winger who now has no hair. Oh, I realised when they did the uh, Carlton Legends thing, I'm like, who's that? Oh, it's Craig Bradley. Where's his hair? Right, there you go. I'm actually James Clements, and this is the AFL Today Show. We're here to make footy a little bit more fun. It's just a bit silly sometimes, isn't it? Uh, I'm also joined by a couple of local dinguses, weirdos, full-blown footy nuffs, especially social guy Leo over there. Hello, Jim. How you going? <laughs> I'm not bad. Not bad. Been spending a lot of time. Does anyone ask you can, how you are? Did you can catch up after the show, lads. Who cares? Just pleasantries. <laughs> And nobody's mate in the middle. Uh, Whoa. It's the stats boy, Liam McKelly. Talking about Craig Bradley's hair, we should do a, another little segment, I reckon. Maybe on Wednesday. Best hair in the AFL. Because we haven't... Have we done Didn't that Didn't we one? quite literally do a best hair 12? 12? <laughs> I don't, no, I don't think we have. <laughs> have we done a best hair? No, we should. I feel like I you'd be all over that. Did yeah. it, uh, good looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on hair. I think the good looking ones do coincide with the best hair, but we'll have to uh, wait. I'm still see. smarting from Jed Walter shaving the bottom. I know. Mm. He, is, is he still. No, he can't He's be. He's young, it'll grow back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> glorious, glorious, <laughs> mate. Anyway, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see a lot more fun stuff like that, basically. Uh, yep. What did we do this week? We did a bunch of footy numbers, warples, all the good stuff in there. Mark and goal of the year. Oh, yeah, the mark and goal of the year. The yeah, rankings, Jim, as well. Oh, yeah, the, the power forward oh, rankings. Yeah. Oh, the power, yeah, power forward and the power ranking. Yes. There's a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, let's get into the preview stuff already because footy is back. We're up to round 20. Oh, God, too- that hurts my heart. <laughs> what are we doing? I know. It's gone so quickly. Just Brutal. yesterday, it was like that weird <laughs> round zero. Now it's round two zero. Oh, I forgot about, about Irish this to Australia. I forgot about opening round. Is that, a, is that the moon? What are we doing? <laughs> Point being, round 20, it's just we've got five weeks left, five rounds left, right? 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I can count. Good math. So, <laughs> yeah, we get out of the AFL season works. <laughs> and nothing is really settled. No, no apart not at from all. Which is good. Probably Sydney on top of the ladder, though. They lose this week. We dogs. usually get to this point of the season and you're like, all right, I know the top five or six, but mm. it's brutal at the moment. It's awesome. Chaos. I love it. Best year we've seen. Let's do some news before we do the game previews. It's like a fireworks, stats boy. Here we go. I was waiting for a bit of some sort of pun. Don't sing it too well. We've got a copyright. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, you know, I am the songbird of my generation. You are. So. Yeah. Did you ever have a teenage dream that Katy Perry would perform at the grand final? He had, Kat, he yeah, had teenage you, dreams yeah. about Katy about Perry. Perry yeah, they, were not, <laughs> they were not about the grand final. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But you yeah. went there. No, you, <laughs> he went there. I've this. already said, so Katy Perry's been announced as the grand final uh, entertainment, right? So yeah. halftime. Yes. No, uh, before the game. Before pre-game. The game. But course, then they game. might come back out. She might come back out at the end like uh, the pre-game. Killers have and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I love the idea that it's like, oh, they've pulled off a coup. And it's like, I mean, have they? Yeah. How busy was she really? Yeah, well, she hasn't released any songs in a well, long she time. she has. This, oh. Yeah, didn't she just release an album? She quite oh, literally yeah. just released a record. <laughs> that makes more Awkward. sense. Oh, sorry, I'm not a big... But by <laughs> the same token, she is like a Super Bowl-level entertainer. She is. She's quite massive. Literally, yeah. She did yeah. a Super Bowl. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, to which I either want to see her rolling in a Batmobile, yep. at which point everybody in the be like, nailed it. Yeah. You don't have to sing at that point. You just go... That was awesome. <laughs> just you could actually just do uh, an angry Anderson reenactment and yeah, just like I reckon. Uh, we will be beaten. <laughs> and just like she could be wearing the bald cap. <laughs> just lock it in. I this think that's be the greatest happen, ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like just blow everything else out of the water. The other idea I had is you're just dressing up as like left shark for nah, the entire I'm good. week. I'm Entire good. week, grand final week. Nah. You're walking the streets of Melbourne interviewing people as I'll left pay shark. To say that. I like my stats, boy. Or how much, how much would, you, would you have to pay me? Um, yeah. Lots. A uh, thousand. Your salary. Twenty dollars. So we're you doing what we Actually, just you. the HSP from downstairs <laughs> and we're recording. All right. So Katy Perry, halftime entertainment. We're feeling pretty well, full time. Pre, pre-game pre entertainment. Pre-game entertainment. Yeah. I'll get there. <laughs> I'm so used to like, there's a combination. Usually Super Bowl's so, halftime. So the thing is like NBA finals, they have like some pre-game. They have halftime, obviously. That's a little bit of a thing. Yeah. Super Bowl is halftime. They have post-game stuff as well. Chaos. How are we feeling? Is it okay? Is it good? Yeah, good I think, about I think it's good. good. I thought deep down you being the muso and things like that about Aussie acts, that's what it, but I saw a lot of comments on the AFL saying, should I have Aussie acts? I think they probably get should. An Aussie act and then they'll like, complain about it. Yeah. Where's the I think they probably should, but it's not going to bring up in that international audience. So people from overseas will watch this and things like that and bring in a bit of an audience, I think. Will they? I think so. Mm. Yeah. Have you been overseas? You've got a bit of optimism there. No, no, they, I, I think that will help the international audience is what I'm saying. I think it'll be very much like when, uh, I don't know, 
Like Rihanna is playing like the Sultan of Brunei's son's <laughs> wedding for two million. You didn't watch that? <laughs> and it'd be like a thing. You're like, neat. That was and then great. it'd be like Katy Perry plays the Australian Rules Grand but Final. Everybody like, what? You know what I mean? It might be on in the news Arcee over there. What's Aussie Rules? That's rugby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know. I like it. Look, I think she's big. That's fine. I think she'll put on a good show. Great and that's show. Yeah. All I'm ever after exactly. with this sort of yeah. entertainment stuff is: Do you know how to play to a stadium? Yes. Which is different to an arena. It's very large. That's and why that's Kiss why was Robbie awesome Williams, last year. Last Robbie year. Williams rolled. Yeah. Because yeah. he's a stadium level entertainer. Yes. He's under four. Kiss, same sort Kiss of vibe. Awesome. Killers at that sort of point. Two right. Yeah. Not me, Loaf. No, not me, Loaf. Unfortunately. No. Bring back Angry Anderson. Right. <laughs> Other news, my beloved Tom Green. He got reprimanded after. Uh, I love that's the word they use. <laughs> he just got slapped on the wrist. For backing out the AFL tribunal in the MRO on his podcast. <laughs> yeah. We would never. Boys, we might be in trouble. I know. <laughs> is, that, is that Andrew Dillon? Come, he's coming through the window. <laughs> Andrew Dillon's just like, just he's going to send the AFL SWAT team through the window at us. He's going to be there with his dodgy haircut going after us. Just get a haircut. What are you doing? It's not difficult. I can put you in touch with a barber. Uh, I don't like this. Neither do I, but it happens you know in every what? sport. You know what? Sport. Local man... <laughs> Show you know brings attention to deficits in his workplace. I yeah, he just said local man shouts at newspaper. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you're right. It's just his workplace. He's it's trying to help his workplace. That's a very all, good point. They're basically just like yeah. he's trying to like level criticisms about his role and his job and the people involved. And they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, it's like the well, then the AFL are going to come out again next week and go, everything's fine. No one like everyone in the whole of the AFL community agrees with Tom Green. He, I, I get why they don't want him to say Would it because it happens in other sports. But rather him say it to the AFL rather probably. than to a podcast. But I feel like a lot of people already have said it's the AFL. Exactly. They just don't we, listen, we don't yeah. know that I, he hasn't. Yeah, you agree. Yeah, I know. You I agree. agree with you guys. I'm just, just trying to play devil's advocate. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Shut up, devil. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you guys know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of devil's advocate, <laughs> yes. The wild card round has been brought to the fore again because yeah. it seems most of the AFL clubs are actually thumbs up. That's because it's. Because they want most to of them finals. aren't in the finals, yeah. <laughs> That's because we are one of the few sort of codes out there and sports that doesn't have like more than half of the teams actually making the postseason, which I do appreciate. I do like that there are ten losers each year and yeah, eight same. sort of. Oh, I like think it's good. Winners makes it harder to, to make the finals. It does make it a lot harder. Mm. Uh, it's one of those things where I think when the NBA have expanded their wild card sort of situation, there's thirty NBA teams, ten teams now from each it's conference have a crack at the playoffs. That's like insane. That's yeah. three quarters. Yeah. Two thirds, two quarters, <laughs> two thirds <laughs> the entire thing. I'm no math genius, but that's okay. The uh, so going to the wild card where I think it was like seven and eight would play nine and ten. I don't like it personally. So seven would play ten, eight would play nine. I think that's the final. Yeah, yeah. Format they like kind it. of landed on, which is, I think, a little bit rough if you're seven and eight. Yeah, that's yeah. what I you're think. Like, bro, the whole season. Look at this yeah. year. You're like, dude, How nine and ten can be super hard. Yep. And you've got to win another game mm. before you actually. Yeah, it's tough. I also think that the team that wins that, I actually think it gives them an advantage for the week after because they're more match conditioned yeah. than the team that has a break. That. I actually, look, you know me, wild card, let's do it. I'm fine with that. I just, but by the time we get to 20 teams, I think we should have this settled. And I feel like yeah. that's actually an okay idea. Yeah. So if we only have 50% of teams still making the finals. Yeah. Happy days. I agree with that. Yeah, we've got 10. We'll have 20 in a couple of years. Off we go. So why not do it now? Wild card me up. I'm fine. Okay. Yep. So that's boy. Your team might make the finals at some point. Uh, no, nah, we'll make it in. Uh, we'll make it next year. Next year. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. North oh, North every North fan thing. Sandwich bet. Bang. No, I don't agree with that. I think in two years. I you mean, said it. You don't agree with it. <laughs> no, I was you just saying. A lot of things. <laughs> I said a lot of brain. things I don't agree. Why did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wild card me up. All right, Carlton had to give a please explain to the AFL, which is pretty cool. They also, like, who else got asked about this? Adelaide the Crows, and Brisbane. Yeah, and Brisbane. And Brisbane. That Mackay one, though, was pretty wild. We were watching it. Yep. He was clearly concussed and wobbling everywhere. Still kicked a goal. I know, but just man. say <laughs> he kicked a goal, but just say something else happened to him on the field and it made, like, something bad happen to his brain or anything. Anything could have happened in that 10. It was like a five or 10 minute period. Yeah. Carlton would have copped a massive fine, yep. I think, a massive suspension for the doctors or something like that. So it was a really bad look, I think. So I think AFL. their sort of explanation was we quite literally were swamped with concurrent injuries as well that they were dealing yeah. with. But they got to, and so when it's yeah. announced to them that oh you need to check on mm. him, it's like oh god we're going to get him off the field now. Yeah. So you can sort of see where at least the wiggle room was, and that's why the AFL are like uh, look 
We partly accept that, but yeah. they're now going, right, what we need to do now is real-time notifications on our clinical yeah. spotters of like, yeah. Especially if there's injuries. other injuries, all right, you might, might have a I, broken leg over there, but concussion should be the number one first one. Is that what they're trying to say? I, I actually sat right behind the Carlton bench. Yes. And I remember at the time De Koning was coming on and off. He yeah. was bruised and battered. Akers was another that That's it. he's obviously not playing tomorrow night, Akers, yep. um, that he was cooked as well. And he, well, he wasn't injured this bloke, but every time Sam Walsh came off, he looked like he was about to throw yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> he, he just works so yeah. hard. Yeah. He walks like Joel Embiid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's all hurts. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, they actually did say that as of this week, if club doctors are occupied with another player with when the ARC message requiring immediate removal of the player for off-field assessment is received, the club GM of football can manage and prioritise a doctor to get the relevant player okay. off the field. So, that, that's, that could be the best mm. way they've ever sorted something out this whole year. They've Quick. looked at something and they quickly sorted so, it out, right, unlike everything else. So, no. Sure. Well done. Well done. All right, and the last little bits and bobs is, uh, you know, it's getting towards the end of the year, as I've just mentioned, round 20 and whatnot. That means Trey Jetta really, really just kicks up a notch. It's starting to, We'll yeah. be talking a lot about this, obviously, going into the off-season. What I don't like is that it does sort of tend to go, oh, geez, look at this thing. That'd be great. You know what's really great right now? Footy. Footy. Yeah, I know. You don't have to concentrate. It's awesome. I agree. I agree. It's one of the worst things about the NBA, I think. Oh, in the mid-season, the, yeah. the game itself is almost secondary to the player movement. Yeah, it is. And it moment. sort of sucks. Mm. Like, because it does, like, you know, I'm just a purist. What I like, like watching <laughs> my basketball and my footy. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, I want to watch the game. Like, mm. I love watching the game. Like, quite physically, I enjoy watching the game. It's awesome. Seeing a few tins, that kind of helps. But still... The extraneous sort of stuff, it is very interesting, but like what are the moves that have put teams over the top of late in these sort of uh, trade periods, right? Oh, like I think that when John won the flag, you got like sting. I don't know. There's not that it's many. Like, yeah. It's very incremental yeah. a, long, a lot of the time. But you look at someone like, so we're about to talk about Tom Barras. Yes. He does sort of feel like the missing piece for a couple of pretty interesting teams. He does. Yep. Uh, so that's the sort of trade chip we go. That does help teams. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. And what, the Hawks, the Dogs... Dogs are the front runners. Blues Hawks just good. joined today or yesterday. Or yeah, something. I reckon if he gets to the Blues, that's the don't mind that. The last, but the, the I don't salary even, cap room. Yeah, yeah. Well, nah, they, they, maybe you just sneak a few gyms. They, they used few. to put it under the table. That was the early two thousand. That's what they're getting chopped. That's, they still do that. I reckon. Pay me salary, Jim. To yeah. get him over the line. I'll just he will just become my employee. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Come on the podcast three times. Twenty bucks. Like, 20 bucks what do you Tom know Brass. about NBA? <laughs> yeah. Co-host. Boom. Done. Tom Brass, if you join Carlton, you can co-host NBA Australia. That is a guarantee. G- yeah. I like that. All right. Let's do some game previews. <laughs> is that a stroke? Unless you want to do some more uh trade setter. Nah, no, no, definitely not. No, Let's good. do previews. Yeah. Friday, my beloved Carlton Blues are taking on the Port Adelaide Power. This is in Marvel, so they beat the Power over at Adelaide Oval for one of their first ever wins at Adelaide Oval. Yes, in a long time. Uh, so they beat Frio, obviously, there, but they've also now beaten Port over there this year. Uh, 13 and a half point favourites are the Blues. These teams just tend to play weird, janky games. Yep. They That's are, just what they do. This is a quick turnaround for the Blues as well. Which five is, day. Five day, which is... Pretty brutal when you're it playing is. Sunday. They should have at least had the Saturday. So this game. is the most annoying aspect, I think, of, of AFL scheduling. Mm. Yo, why not just have Sydney Brisbane Sunday night yeah. in a huge clash rather than like the janky Carlton North game that yeah. no one cared about? Exactly. Despite it being very good, no doubt. But no one would have blinked an eye if Carlton yeah. North was at one ten on Sunday, and then no. Carlton would have had at least another and half, half day, day make break. So that so was a bit weird. Yeah, it was bizarre. I don't know. AFL scheduling is just so silly. It is. I was so just thinking dumb. about that today. Obviously, <laughs> I think about it a lot. I think we think about it weekly. Every, yeah, every day. Every, 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 every night. night I can't sleep. <laughs> I'm like, Thursday night. It's like, come on, man. Like, Thursday night footy. Oh, it's cold. It's like, yeah, it's pretty cold in Melbourne today. But it's not it. cold on Friday. You know it's not cold? <laughs> Noosa. Oh, it's really gone tomorrow. Let's go. But <laughs> point B, go up north. She's a little bit warmer. It's okay. You can still get crowds. Anyway, this one's <laughs> under the roof. At Marvel, 7.40 on Friday. The over-under is 182.5, which is pretty high, but look, not a giant surprise considering the Blues' defensive struggles of late. Yes. Uh, The fact that the power of the 10th ranked defense as well. Uh, Blues are the second offense, 14th defense. That absolutely checks out. Uh, Offensively, they tend to just get into shootouts now, and I don't like it Mm. because... It yeah. makes it like the games are a lot closer when when the Blues be. do that because they they should be a lot better than the 14th ranked defense. I think it was, 
I was saying this to McCurdy on Wednesday's show, right, about how the simple fact that the Blues play one good quarter, yeah. the Swans play three, it has never mm. rung more true. Like, but mm. They're just so much better across the rest of the game than they were last year where they play one good quarter and then really suck. It's like, this year they play one mm, awesome quarter and then they're okay, okay the rest of the way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, interesting matchup, though, because Port – a good at Marvel stats, boy. Give us they some stats. Absolutely love playing at Marvel. Port have won ten of their last eleven at Marvel. Ooh. That's pretty. It's like they're way better at Marvel than at the Adelaide Oval, which is just wild. It's crazy. Uh, but Carlton have won the last three meetings by an average of thirty points. Uh, you've absolutely smashed them by. I think it was. 40, 50 plus in two of those three. Was there a game at the G last year? Maybe last year? No, it was at Marvel. Was that Marvel? It was, no, it was the was start of... G. I swear I there was, was one at Marvel as well. Been, uh, where you guys beat them, it was this, the... You were on that massive streak. Yep. And I'm pretty sure that was at Marvel as well. Jim was streaking. But that, so that was the one game they might have lost, actually, 10 of the last 11. I mean, I'll have to double check that one. But yeah, Carlton have been really good the last couple of years against them. But Port, they just love the uh, Marvel Stadium. They yeah, do? It's weird. Mm. So does... It really surprises me. Charlie Kern, wow. He... Uh, doesn't mind a few snags at the old Marvel. Doesn't and mind a few kicks. snags. And free kicks, yes. I'm pretty sure the free kicks thing has been a bit debunked, hasn't it? It's like other, as opposed to other power forwards, big sort week, of forwards. Yeah. Like, no. He actually doesn't get as I think it was others. worse on Good Friday than yeah. last week. He's kicked four plus goals in Carlton's last three home matches. There you go. And most of those would have been at Marvel. How many get last week in the end? Uh, four, I think. Yeah. Did yeah. It, feel like, it didn't feel like game, four, but he had a lot like, of shots. Yeah. He had a, a lot of shots last week, Charlie. So he'll, he'll be fired up for this one. Nice one. So they did play at the MCG round five in 2022. Was that the Nunes after the siren? What game am I thinking the way they were at Marvel? Nunes was against Freo, I think, at yeah. Optus. Anyway, good stuff. Uh, yeah, that was Freo. Anyway, point being, that was a close one. So the 30 that you're talking about, they beat them by, it was 107-71 earlier this year. year. Oh, this year, sorry. 122-72 yeah. last year. Then the one before that was really close. close. So, yep. uh, it's a tricky one. Because I think very tough game. with all the ins and outs that we are about to yes, talk about. Yes, it just about, came out, just dropped. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one for the Blues. They do get Mitch McGovern back. Good. That's a huge one, actually. Kiddo comes in for TDK. Brody Kemp comes in for Sam Durden, who was hit, hurt as well. So the Blakers thing probably means that Chincotta possibly moves back. Cunningham goes to the wing a little bit more maybe. Uh, I've got some Carlton mates that aren't happy with Adam Chera on, off half back because I feel like at his like best he he hasn't he's been a at his best. I know he hasn't been at his yeah. best, but he's is. Do you like him off half back as a Carlton fan? He has been okay there, to be fair, but I don't know. I think it's got to be midfield. I think he has to be. He's a I midfielder. I think like, it's yeah. got to be midfield. But they've sort of they've been doing weird stuff, right? <laughs> Chincotta forward. Chincotta's like slung forward, forward, just like throwing him just back, trying running things out. I don't mind that. They threw Williams forward. Like the, the Hewitt sub thing was yeah. weird. Kennedy yep. getting hurt but not being the sub sort of – like, I don't know. It's just like moving the magnets, maybe to move the magnets. <laughs> uh, but McGovern is a big in because I think Kemp, McGovern, Saad, Wheaters, as well as Newman, right? Like you basically – it means that you have a very settled back six. Yep. Um, I guess. And against this Port Adelaide team that brings back Lockie Jones and Kane Farrell but not uh, the big – Big, big forward. Oh, the young dude. Why am I blanking on his name? Oh, George. Tom, no, um, Tom Marshall. Tom Todd Marshall. Todd Marshall. Yes, sorry, he was. Yeah. Uh, he was injured from Charlie Dixon. Yeah, he was rumored to be looking yes. to be back yes. this week. Yes, yes. How goes Dylan Williams, Ollie Lord? So, I feel a little bit more confident. Okay. In that, like Georgiades will probably still tear it up because he's awesome. Charlie Dixon yep. will be a little can bit. Can he of a go problem. two in a row? I don't know. Nah, he was Dix against Dixon. Richard. Might be a problem. I don't. Yeah. So Maybe. I think the Blues can do this. So I'm going to go the Blues by fourteen, the blues, really? which is. Well, 15, which is uh, just over the line. So there we go. Very nice. Uh, the big question, do either of these teams finish top four? Uh, I don't think Port can. I did a ladder predictor in there in like the bottom part of the eight at best. Blues should. The Blues should. If They've the got Blues a pretty good this, run from here. They are yeah. in the catbird seat to finish top four. Yeah, yeah, I think Blues will. Port, no. Even if Blues lose this, I still think they can. Because uh, I think one of the things we're going to take a look at later on is the Blues' defense. That's the big thing, right? Like you can't be this bad defensively no. and actually challenge for the flag. So that's very that's true. my biggest worry. Yep. Like down this stretch, five weeks to go. You got a couple of interesting games in there for the Blues Track so they defense. can very trip like the Hawthorne game. They got a couple mm. of weeks. Mm. Uh, you don't want to trip up. You got to win this one. So I'm going the Blues by 15. Stats boy. Uh, I'm going the one. This is the one they will trip up. I'm going Port by 12. They're just so good at Marvel under the roof. They've just got a lot of guys that. Obviously, Butters is pretty good in the wet, but then you got Rosie. Uh, you got so many players. Even Paul Charlie Francis. Dixon. 
What was that? Horn yeah. Francis, yeah. They do don't really... get too angry. Don't oh, get too angry. Oh, I might get angry about <laughs> him. <laughs> I'm just seething talking about him. He hasn't been that good lately. Even Logan Evans, I feel like we haven't talked about him. He was really good the last couple of weeks. 22 and a goal last week, I believe. Doing his bit. He's been really good. He's only played like five games, I think, and he's been awesome. So I think their depth's starting to build, and I reckon Port are going to get the win. This is their home away from home. Port by 12. Blues by three. Oh. This will be very like <laughs> heart like heart, Jim, Jim's heart rate's going through the roof. <laughs> I'll be sitting there on the couch full of pizza and beers. Oh, I hate everything. <laughs> when the boomers start. <laughs> yeah, where's the boomers? Is that the move? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not well, is that the move? <laughs> uh, all right. We're all predicting at least a very close game. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be really close. Nice one. Go, Blues. Smash them. Saturday, the North Melbourne Kangaroos take on the Geelong Cats. In Blundstone Arena down in yes. Tassie, which changes. I meant uh, I've written the wrong thing later in the run sheet, but that's okay. Uh, I have seen that. One yeah. forty-five uh, <laughs> p.m. on Saturday. The over under is one seventy-three point five, which feels a bit generous because I feel like if this was at Marvel, <coughs> you'd fly the over because the yep, Roos just getting shootouts there. Oh, they the cats aren't too bad there. If you go down to Tassie though, what happens down there? Weird, weird, weird stuff, stuff happens in Tassie. But uh, you're talking about the over under. Nine of the last ten matches at Blundstone have gone over. Interesting. Weirdly enough, North are really good with the wind. So there's always a wind one way, and whoever's kicking that way just scores a bunch of like six or seven plus goals a quarter. So is it Adelaide you played there earlier and it was early in the year? It was yes. like 140 to 80. Yeah, or yeah. And yeah. We, we've played Melbourne there a couple of times the last couple of years and it was huge, both yeah. over 100. So yeah, I'm, I'd be going well over that one. Interesting. Century. That's a good. That's why we have you on here to talk. There you go. I've been point. down there a couple of times. Good, good fun uh, watching the footy. <laughs> there's, there. a yeah, there's a reason. There's <laughs> a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. The Roos are 16th on offense, 18th on defense. Ugh. Jeez, the Cats are pretty remarkably fifth on offense and 12th on D. Which yeah. they've improved on that defense. When you think but... about their year, it hasn't been like massive, massive, massive scores that you sort of think about, right? But mm. they've just been <laughs> solid and consistent. I think through yep. a lot of it, they are 24 and a half point favorites which feels about right because weird things do happen in Tassie. And that's kind of the big question for me here. Like, are we worried about the Cats being able to keep the ruse at arm's length? Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not I'm worried. I'm on the road in Tassie. You should be worried that they will. Oh, I'm worried as a North fan, but I'm not worried about the Cats. Geelong oh, yeah. have beaten us the last 12 uh, meetings, and North have actually only won one of their last 10 in Hobart. Oof. And it's supposed to be our home away from home. Yeah. So people in Tassie have just been itching for a win, and it's not going to come this week, unfortunately. Yeah. There's lots of ins and outs, actually, but we should probably That's a good get into point. that. There is, uh, there is a lot. we have Sleevo. Oh, Stevenson. Oh, I don't Sleevo. want him back in. He's play. back. Oh, no. I'm half back. No. <laughs> James half Stevenson back, back. No, in for the Ruse. Oh. Will Phillips as well, which is nice. Zane Dersma. Out goes Colby McKercher. Oh, jeez. Zach Fisher. Oh, no. Oh, super coach. Eddie Ford. Uh, he got... He was really good last week. He was really great. That yeah. face knock. As yeah. Well, Wasn't that in the Mackay incident? I think it might have been. Yeah, it was the back of his head. Mackay just ruins it for everyone, doesn't he? No. What's he doing? Doesn't ruin anything. Uh, for the Cats, Jeb Buse, Tanner Brune. That's a big That's one. a good in, yeah. He was yeah. awesome. Oh, Jeb, VFL, Jeb Buse should be in the team every week. He's an absolute he's gun. VFL, Chris man. Scott hates him. I've got a lot of Geelong mates. He's not mates. a gun. No, he is very, he's very good. He's a, he's a solid player. He's a midfielder that they need. I think he's that's a good not a midfielder. You watch Even Jeb back, Buse back, over back the, He plays a bit of mid as well. He's a defender. He plays a bit of mid as well. Halfback flank, yeah. Shannon Neal is also back in. Someone else. <laughs> I think you might. Be. You might be. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Neal comes in. So Zach Two is outmanaged. He's like, oh, I don't want to get on a plane. I don't want to get on a plane down to Tasmania. <laughs> oh, like... Brandon Parfit and Mitch Nevitt uh, both dropped as well. Parfit which, was really bad. Yeah, yeah. Parfit was not very good. He only got like six touches. I think Bruin had like 35 in the VFL last Bru- week. Bruin's so. a great player. Yeah, yeah. good I like him. I think that's a big one for, especially down in Tassie, where you sort of just need. I think that's why Hawthorne plays so well. They've got so many dudes who are very similar, I think, in, to the Tanner Bruins of the world, mm. where you turn around and go, how do you – you've got 22? Yeah. <laughs> Sick. That was awesome. And you've kicked a goal. That's weird, but nice. You need those other players. Uh, I'm taking the Cats by 32. 32. Just a solid win. Mm, I'm going Geelong by 25. I think it will be pretty close for three quarters because North, yeah, been playing some exciting footy last month, but similar to that Carton game, towards the end of the game, the, the bigger names just step up and uh, – yeah, like likes of Stuart Cameron are going to take over in the last quarter. So 25. Yeah, I'll, I'll go one less. Cats by 24. Ooh, nice. not scouting the line, though, with, with the 24. Jezza, <laughs> do we think he's got he a gets four back, clearances? <laughs> <laughs> do we think he gets off the chain? I think yes. so. He yes. loves playing against 13! North. 13! 13! <laughs> not 13, I That's hope. a big call. <laughs> no, yeah. He kicks 13. Ready? <laughs> Q clash. Let's oh. do it. Oh, boy. Are we missing a game in here? No, so there's two 435 games and one 145 game because AFL are great at fixturing. We're doing a great job. Yeah, everybody. what are you doing? Keep it up. <laughs> I don't want to get reprimanded, so I'm not going to criticize you. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Up there at the People's First Republic. <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, oh, our dear, 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 our dear leader. I love this. Gold Coast taking on Brisbane in a cute clash. The Lions are somehow six and a half point favourites. Are you saying somehow? somehow? They're in much better form. Yeah. They have no tall backs. That's true. At the moment, which oh, I think true. is a bit of a problem. They Dara Joyce. Is Danaher at fullback? Dara Joyce Wait, goes what? out. He is a fullback. Wait, what? <laughs> send, him, send him back. <laughs> They That's lose wild. Dara Joyce, Harris Andrews, which is massive because of the concussion. Brucey. Brucey oh, reveal how goes are they, out. How are they dropping Brucey? He's after the vibes beating, man. After beating the top team on the table, yeah. uh, in come Logan Morris, Jackson Pryor, and Connor McKenna. In for the Suns, Thomas Berry. Thomas Berry. <laughs> uh, Jared Witsy. So oh. the Wits Moyle combination, is that be all right? We're going to do it. Yeah, that's they're still in. They've yeah. now named Moyle on the field. That's all right. Alex Sexton's been dropped. Jed Walter. Oh, he's been dropped. And Connor Buderick oh. has been dropped as Your well. Your man, Jed Walter. It's because he cut his hair. Uh, my other man, Noah Anderson. Congrats on his 100th game. We're all very proud of you and uh, Team Jim. <laughs> Jim's going to rank each Noah. of your 100 games right I'll now. I'll do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> last week. <laughs> Number one last, last week. week. Number two before. the week before. <laughs> uh, we'll just split it into all the games you played at home in the top exactly. 50 yeah. and away from home. They're the bottom 50. I like it. I like it. But you think about the size and like agility of this back line, out uh, of the front line rather, for the Suns. Yep. I love the Suns in this game because you've got Ben King at home. You've got Ben Long at home. Lukosius, Humphrey at home. Lukosius goes off. Like, there's just a bit of size. Holman will no doubt, like, sneak forward and kick two. Like, this is just what he does at home. The Lions, with that sort of question mark around that back line, I don't I can't believe Joe Danaher has been that. that that's just that's a piss take, surely. surely. They're just joking around. So the Suns are the perfect middle. They can't win away. They can only win at home. They're yep. 11th on offense, 11th yep. on defense. Yep. They are absolutely median. I love it. Yeah. Are I they now the, the line of demarcation? I think oh. that they Maybe. aren't because they're below, like the dogs are still, they're still below the that, I think. And yeah. they're below that. So the dogs are quite literally now the line of demarcation. <laughs> so uh, the Suns, look, they're at home. We know that they're just, they're unbeaten there this year, right? They yeah. haven't lost at home. It's yeah. awesome. The Lions, they like staying north as well. They're third on offense, fifth on defense. This is a really big ask. And if they win this, yes. you go, oh, hello. Hello, look out there. Yeah, but it's like the same as every other week. Oh, the Suns win this. We're like, they're good. And then they come down to Melbourne. No, and they if go they to win Tassie this, we're not going to say they're good. Oh, I, I bet you all the media To be will. honest, I think if the Suns win this, it you sort of take that and go, right, it's still, yes, it's a home game. It's the home mm. Suns. We get it. But to beat someone as good as like Brisbane, like yeah. who are flying at the moment, yeah. I think that's a little bit different. But this thing is like, oh, where do they play every other game? Yeah. Not at all. Like I see it as like Port beating Richmond last week. Like they just had to do it convincingly. Exactly. Like it's not like yeah, anything enough. comes from that. Yep. Yeah. Stats boy, we've got some stats for us. The over under is one seventy five and a half as well. Yeah. The, uh, well, on that Gold Coast last eight home matches have gone over the total points. That's because they average over one hundred nine points there. Uh, the Lions though have won ten of the last eleven Q Clash meetings. So uh, the last one was to Brisbane. The one before that was to Gold Coast. So they've been they've been pretty close the last two, and then the ones before that Brisbane Smashed just them. smacked them because Gold Coast have always been pretty bad. So, yeah. There you go. I'm going to take the Gold Coast Suns in this one because <laughs> they are at home. We're all going the Gold Coast Suns, yep. I think, which is wild oh, when the Bris Brisbane like Lions are favourites. You but just can't Suns go against them at home. are at home. And They're also just the lack of key defenders for Brisbane. Well, the big yep. question for this one is quite simply, can the 28th <laughs> parallel survive its biggest test I yet? Put that they are there. above the 28th yep. parallel, but they are playing another team from above the 28th parallel. Oh, mate, actually, this is... Because it's going to be a draw. Does the system break down? I'm going to tip the draw. Let's have a look. I'm, the draw. I'm going right now. Is that going to be cool? The 28th parallel is just going to explode and it's going to be a draw. <laughs> that, that's not my big call. If, if, if they do draw and the parallel explodes, that might mean they win away. That, uh, they might win the flag if, it, if they draw. That's what I'm saying as well. <laughs> so, so that's your big call is a draw <laughs> and the sun's in the if flag. If the sun's draw, they're going to win the flag. That's All not right, my big call. Let's do it. Let's do That's it. just going to happen. <laughs> All right, Gold Coast by 18. Leo. Suns by nine. That's so a draw. Nah, not a draw. I'll go. Oh, so he's th hang on. So he's thought it and then he's gone. Nah, back I'm going draw. Stuff it. Yeah, stuff good. it. That's back pretty funny. Back yourself. <laughs> Another barn burner at 4.35 oh. on Saturday afternoon. Brutal. Marvel, this is the St. Kilda Saints taking on the Essendon Bomb Rays. Minus four and a half point favorites. Ah, the Bombers. Interesting. That's very short. Very, it is. Very, very short. They haven't short. been very good though. Uh, people are not trusting the Bombers to get by this uh, defensively mined Saints team, shall yes. we say. The over-under is 160.5. The Saints are, of course, the third-ranked defense in the AFL. 
they are the 15th <laughs> ranked offense. <laughs> Just like That's the worst combination in AFL if you want to watch a game. Oh, yes. As usual. Uh, the Dons are 10th and 13th offense. Then That's defense. also yuck, but for other reasons. That's, That's just, just consistently bad. Yeah. Consistently rubbish. Mm. Uh, the thing is, what do the Bombers do to teams in the bottom four, Stats Boy? Oh, of course they lift against the games that they should win. Uh, this Bombers, is going to be Jake Stringer kicking. Yeah, Bombers have won goals. the last nine matches against teams in the bottom four. So that just sums up their season. Their, their season is, oh, we're going to win the and, flag. And somehow we... they'll play every team twice in the bottom exactly. four. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, how did that fixture work? At the start of the season, they beat all these crap teams. They've hardly been any team in the top eight. And everyone's got, oh, isn't it really good? The fact that they're dropping off doesn't surprise me. They just can't beat those big teams. But... They do play well at Marvel, especially against the bottom four teams. And the Saints are the, a bottom four team. They are. Somehow. I, the Saints obviously made finals last year. sound like year. a Saints fan, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Well, they made finals. Like, we were at a final, uh, the St. Kilda we GWS final yeah. last year, and then the Saints have just got, dropped massively off. Uh, Out goes Liam Henry, which is a big one because he big, has uh, been... He's been good, yeah. Um, like, he was fantastic mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. Caminiti comes in. Uh, in for the Bombers. The big ins. Two meter Peter, Darcy Parrish, and Dyson Heppel. Not bad. Out goes Todd Goldstein. I, I oh, hate this. I called that for last week. He hasn't been very good. And they finally listened to me. Uh, Guelph is out injured as well, and so is Jake Kelly. So that's pretty tough for the Bombers, but it means that... they got some big ends at least. At least they can sort of fit Parrish in, who had been sort of coming back through the VFL from his calf. Cam is a sneaky big in for the Saints, I, I think. Uh, just another forward that memory... They just don't have to rely on memory. Got, like, they've Shaman. got Jack Higgins listed at centre forward. Cooper Sharman? They need to be another he's big been guy. Right. He's been all right, yeah. But just Cameron Eady, I think he's he can build into something if he doesn't get injured again. Big question. Are they the bounce-back bombers <laughs> or do they blow it up bombers? They are the blow-it-up bombers. I did a can ladder they be predictor. both? Can they, yeah, yeah. What? Can can they win and, and then they'll, they'll blow, blow it up, up later? later. Yeah. I, I'm still going blow-it-up bombers. The, even if they win this, the bombers fans, there's some in the office... They were just going, oh, why does this happen every year? Why does this happen to us? And I think it's hilarious. We I think do. they'll be <laughs> – I think there's like this weird sort of situation. This game is going to be fascinating to watch. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, this okay, will be really? Like the, this will be the lead into my <laughs> Boomers, Boomers live stream. Yes. Can't wait. Check so that out. You're not going to watch Melbourne GWS, Jim? <laughs> probably, what a crap game. <laughs> probably going to miss that one. I'll be missing uh, that one. But this is going to be interesting. Like there would be absolutely zero shock if the Bombers came out flying yep. and like put the herd on the Saints, like slowly drag themselves back into the game yep. and the Bombers just sort of sneak out a win. And that's what I think will kind of happen because I think the Bombers have too much speed, too much class yes, yeah. for this and kill the team. They yeah, should win. I agree. But I Surely. think it just weird stuff will happen when you play the Saints. I think they'll just try to drag it down in the mud. It'll be close, yeah. And I'm going to go the Bombers by four. <laughs> yeah. Bombers fans will be very I think. Nervous. I think – Essendon by 22. We saw St. Kilda against Sydney. They were able to stop Sydney speed quite convin convincingly, <laughs> but I just don't know if they've got that big effort in them again against Essendon. Yeah, no, I agree with it's that. It's going to take a high, high level of intensity. I'll agree with that. Uh, Bombers by 15. I think it, it'll be just a yeah a, a old slog. They're just going back and forth. Very defensive, but Bombers get over the line. It is like an interesting battle because like we was – you know, joking about Jake Stringer just going, check this out, I'm going to kick six. Uh, he could. Langford, Caddy, Peter Wright. That is a big forward line with like Durham it, and Gresham sort of floating around as yeah. well. Yeah, no, I think that's the forward line they have to go with. Especially I think, I think Saints have a big I big think that's line. well balanced, that forward line. You've got Peter Wright as the first tall, you've got Langford as the second, and Caddy in his first third, year yeah. playing as the third tall. That's why that's I like perfect. That's a perfect forward line. Caddy having a big game, yeah. Uh, Jai Caldwell's obviously been no problems making this team too, which yep. is good. The super coach. Love Just it. Saying. Beautiful. Yeah. I thought also, he was, he's a weapon. I, I thought he was concussed for sure, but apparently he was all right. Right. Following that, Melbourne GWS at the. Not Why a GMHBA. Is, that'd probably oh, be an yeah. yeah. ACG. I There's a G it. in it. <laughs> the Giants are half point favorite stats, boy. They are, which is. I thought it could be a little bit more, but it might be to do with the weather because Melbourne are really good against Essendon in the rain. It's going to pour the next couple of days in Melbourne. Ooh. So I don't know if that's why the yeah, odds are a little bit closer. I'm not sure, but kind of want big in for this game. Big Maximus or really is he playing? Gornicus. No way. Owner of a busted foot, <laughs> husband to a beloved wife, son of a beloved father. Uh, Bailey Laurie and Tajway Woden in as well. Christian Salem's out injured again. So is Colton Tholstrup and Tom Sparrow has oh. been dropped. In for the Giants. Oh. He busted his nut. He's back, Sam Taylor. <laughs> in for Isaac Cummings. He did. He's, he's he, just stayed in He facts. literally did. Right, literally busted a nut. So good on you, Sam Taylor. That is fantastic to see. That him is back. a massive in, yeah. I don't think I'd ever play footy again. Yeah. Oh, oh same. Oh, that would be so. I don't know if I'd leave the house again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I've got to show my face. I'll wear like 20 pairs of undies. <laughs> just a, a diaper. 
<laughs> well, okay, uh, this is good. <laughs> like, <laughs> always wear red pants. I like that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Are 14th on offense because they are horrible. They are. And they are fourth on defense because they're not too bad. So this is an good interesting defenders, one yeah. where you've got Jesse Hogan going up against his old team as well, Jakey Lever and co yep. uh, back there. This is a really, really just Giants prove it to us in the midfield kind of game, right? Like can you get this tsunami rolling? That is the big question. In the, the weather too. In the Do tsunamis roll when it's raining? <laughs> Like, how does that work? Uh, do that? I think it, I, I think, think it's so. possible. I think it's is water wet. Yeah, is <laughs> oh, I'm not going there. It's not wet. No, <laughs> that's the that's the big question. That's the big question. Is, water, is water, water wet? Water wet. <laughs> that's another. We want to know. Uh, I think they reached the G. Yeah, uh, they have. They've uh, performed at the G in finals and things they like have. that. So they no, that was good weather. Good. That weather, was good weather. Though. To yeah. be fair, yeah. Uh, give us some stats, stats, man. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, the Demons have won the last nine home games uh, against teams ranked higher on the ladder than them. So. When they're sort of against the wall, the right. the underdogs, they got smashed by Freo though. But they must have been higher than Freo on the ladder at the time. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. So at the time, oh. whoever they were Very playing, good. a lot of these games, I'd say seven or eight of the nine, they were the underdogs. And when they've been underdogs this season, they win. That was obviously they were big underdogs against Essendon yep. um, and things like that. So they've got a, guys with a bit of heart, like Jack Viney lifts in these sort of games. Clayton Oliver, Stephen May, Stephen May, even though he's a flog. Does he have heart? Yeah, he does. He does. But. Yeah, I don't see them winning this How one. How was Stephen May arguing with Tracy when they were down by 50 points and Tracy's kicked three and know, 20 yeah. disposals on him? What are you talking about? Maybe because he's got a bit of flogitis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Giants, the big question for me is like, can they sort of, these are like the big questions that will always sort of be floating around the Giants. Like come down to the G, beat a, a half decent-ish team that have been. It, it gives them confidence for finals down, as well. Up and down, like, mm. Especially if it's going to be wet. I think they can do this. I'm going to go GWS by 14. Yeah, I think GWS by five. I did have over five goals, but I think that weather's just brought it down mm. a little bit. I think it'll be very scrappy. Melbourne will be in this. Yeah, actually, I'm going to go. I'm going to go the same. I'm just going to go buy a goal. Melbourne by six. Just one more than you. Uh, you smell my six. Copy in my homework because of the uh, weather and things like that. But they should they should win. Melbourne, uh, especially Max Gore, I feel like he's going to be hobbling around. I just so. think it's going to be really hard for Melbourne to kick a winning score. Mm. Yeah. Right. Which they haven't done but all it year. It could yeah. be the game where they, like, I think GWS the last two weeks have won with less inside 50s. Yep. Could be yes. the exact same. Melbourne have 20 more inside 50s but lose. Yep. I can easily see that. Yep. Because it's they don't seem like the team that has, like, the million inside 50s and really punish you. Yeah. Like, they don't have enough good all, forwards. So, yeah. Yeah. They're all selfish. Oh, bang. And then we have the other doubleheader on Saturday night, Frio West Coast in a derby. Another derby. What do they call it? A derby? The yeah, derby, they say derby over there. Derby over yeah. there. Yeah, we say derby, they say derby. Derby. <laughs> Good job, you doobies. Uh, 37 and a half point favourites are the Dockers. 8-10, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, <laughs> fascinating setup because West Coast won this last time earlier this year. Yeah, what the hell? Frio are now absolutely gunning it. The over-under is 160.5. Uh, the defense of the Dockers has been their calling card this year. They are second in the AFL, 73.8 points per game. Uh, yep. The Eagles are not. They are 16th. Giving up 98.8. That is a bit of a disparity. That is yes. a, in fact, 25 point disparity. Yeah, correct. I'm a brain genius. Quick maths. <laughs> uh, the Eagles winning this. That was wild. Is it, at the end of this season, there's going to be two just big things where you go, wait, Richmond beat Sydney? Yeah. yeah. And West Coast beat Frio? Yeah. yeah. What? That, that could be two top four teams. It's like last are... year, West Coast beat GWS in round two. That's right. And the Giants came storming home. Yeah. Yeah. Adelaide beat Carlton and Essendon at Marvel. Yeah, and then so. could be in the bottom five. Yeah, yeah Amazing. Uh, stats boy, give us some stats. Yeah, as you said, they won by 30. They didn't just win against Freya last night. They won by 37. I'm pretty sure the line Yeah, was, I love that the line yeah, is the, the line is the same, but it's the opposite. Have Should, they got on the wrong team? Yeah. <laughs> well, because I remember the last time the line was 30 plus for Freya. Yeah. And then West Coast like, that's a bit rude. We're going to win by 37 it was ourselves. Some Harley's coming of age game. It was, it? it was. He dominated. Yeah, yeah. What happened to him? Everyone stopped talking about him. He'll come good. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, oh, baby, 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 whoa, baby, 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 baby. That got me. That might, that might pick up and <laughs> drill and jumped shot. in his chair over there. Uh, yeah, but the Eagles have dropped off massively. They've only scored over 58 points once in their last five games. They do play a lot better at home, but if they only score 50, 60 points against Freo, Freo could win this easily by yeah. 40 plus. Yeah. Counterpoint. Yeah. Massive ins. Oh, they do have big ins. Jeremy Let's have McGovern. Except for Jack Darling. Jeremy McGovern. <laughs> He's the J Train, good. Jakey Waterman, Jack Darling, and Yo! Yo! <laughs> Elliot Yo, Alco, Alex Withen, Jermaine Jones, Jack Petricelli, and Ooh. Campbell Chesser. 
Uh, all dropped. That's there a bit stiff. With it and Petra Charlie, like, I thought it were right. Tall players in for some small players out. Mm. Draper and Emmett in for the Dockers. Alex Pierce refractured his arm. Yeah, I saw that. Or it's like a new yeah. fracture. So he had a cool like sleeve on, on it as weird. well. But Michael Walters is out injured too. So uh, <sighs> those are two pretty tough ones for the Dockers. We know that derbies are always a bit weird and wonky. So like Tazzy. Exactly. Yeah. Weird <laughs> things happen in derbies. Uh, it's probably because <laughs> they call it. The Derby. Uh, how much to free our win by is the big question. <laughs> but really the big question is like asserting your defense on a team like the Eagles, Frigo should be able to do it. How easily do, do they do it is the sort of big question here for me. Yeah. Can they do it? I think it just still gets a little bit wonky on them just because the Eagles will always lift. It'll be a chaos crowd, you know that. Yep. I'm going to go the Dockers by 28 points. I'm going to go Flag Mantle flag man by 40. <laughs> flag. They've been calling themselves Flag Mantle. Yeah, Every time they call themselves Flag Mantle, have they, they been, they've never have won a flag. Have they been calling themselves that or fans been calling Maybe fans. Oh, they need it. to embrace it, though. It's good fun. Yeah, but like they saying it themselves would be pretty weird. No, Actually, fun, no, though. I think it's exactly what they need to do. Change yeah. their name. Should they change it's a bit their of, name? It's a bit of self-belief. Because yeah. this yeah. is a team that has like come into the league and just been rubbish yeah. for a lot yeah, of it. Right? that's true. I think if you just go full like wrestling villain, <laughs> flag full mantle. heel, we're flag mantle. Come on, have a crack. It's like ah, you lost. We're like we don't care. We're still flag <laughs> yeah, we're mantle. Cool, yeah. Like that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Lean it. into it, Frio. What are you doing? I don't mind. That's what a docker would do. Like a big beefy yeah. wharfy. I love this idea. Got the beanie on. Yeah. Anyway, nice. uh, who hasn't given their team? <laughs> I haven't. Um, Frio by four. <laughs> Frio by forty three. I think they're going to win this pretty comfortably. West Coast have been so bad the last couple months. <laughs> My jag just went over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that the moon? Is that the moon? <laughs> <laughs> we made three more times. <laughs> Sunday, a big game with the MCG, or at least they would be if these teams were any good. Collingwood versus yeah. Richmond. Twenty three and a half point favorites are the Pies. MCG, 110. The over-under is 170.5. We have some big outs for this one as well. We do. Because Nank is in the concussion protocol. Oh, that's a, that is a huge out. They do yeah. have a couple of big ins, though, because with the extended bench, they've named Nick Vlosten, uh, Tim Taranto. Okay. Both back from – Vlosten was in a weird injury. No, the earlier Taranto in the year, was yeah. a concussion. So mm-hmm. yeah. uh, Bauer and Coulthard, nice. And <laughs> for the Pies, nice. Lockie Schultz, again – in from a concussion. Mason Cox is back. Mason Cox? That, wasn't that what Sam McClure... Like, we played was, VFL last week. Sam so McClure he's... say he was the missing piece to Collingwood? Well, like, now they're going to win and he's going to act like he's right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Billy F. and Frampton, <laughs> Jack Bytel, Harvey Harrison and Will Parker on the pies yep. for Reef McInnes, Kruger, who was out with a concussion, and Joe Richards. Have been Joe dropped. Richards is stiff to miss out already. They, yeah, he's actually a bit stiff he's considering they had... About 10 players that got 10 or less disposals last week. He's rate. a good player, Joe Richards. That's, I don't know about that. Fly, what are you doing? Over under 170.5 is interesting to me because the Richmond, like, just that team just can't score. Mm. No. And the Pies, they also have these moments where you're like, they? They can't score either, yeah. Can you guys score? I feel like the under is 100. But, but these are like, what is it? The in- immovable object meets the... Uh, Whatever, the other thing. <laughs> Good words, Good, Jim. Yeah, I, that could be your best comparison. The unstoppable yeah. force meets the immovable There you version. go. I there we go. There. But this is the very easily movable object versus the very stoppable force. Yes. Where it's like, ah, yeah. oh, could both their offensive – this could be the big question. Uh, could both their offensive woes just fall by the wayside by playing each other, or is Collingwood's defense still good enough no. to take it to Richmond? Darcy That's Moore doesn't even know where he is. Uh, they're ranked fifteenth in defense. I, don't, I still don't rate their defense. They're ranked fifteenth. Yeah, That's how bad crazy. is that? Last year they were top four all the way. They would have been first. They, sure, they, they might have been. been. Yeah. I know they were top four all the way through. Yeah. Crazy. You got some more stats for us, stats man. Yeah, Collingwood failed to cover the line in their last five matches, and they've now lost four in a row. That was, uh, I think, Leo didn't even believe in his Hawks last week, so they can't know. lose four in a row. But obviously, they got the job done. Four of the last five meetings between these two have gone under. So you got uh, defenses fifteenth versus seventeenth. I would be going over, even though it's one seventy. There's no rain. I had a look on Sunday. That's no why rain. I'm, no rain, yeah. which it's is like weird. Blind melon. Yeah. <laughs> what? The band. Oh, sure. <laughs> I love that band. Their hit from 1995. No it? rain. No rain. There you go. Sure. Got to check it out. I wasn't even alive. He was in. He was, he was in that band. <laughs> <laughs> he was the drummer. <laughs> I wasn't, but anyway. Delicious. Uh, delicious. <laughs> hey, what's the big question? Hi. The pies have given up 118, yes. 101, 92, That's 91, and 133. Yes. That's why I'm going over. Five. Yeah. Games that is shocking. Like I know that there's uh, you got like Sh- Shay Bolden can hit the scoreboard, and there's not that as He's many guys that can hit the scoreboard. He has, but I feel like this game has to go over because Pies and Richmond just horrible defense this year. All right, I'll pay that. Is this the get right game for the Pies? 
Do they use this as a springboard? Right. I feel they like they're going to come yeah. next week. Like they win this and lose next week, and then it's done. I think as a springboard, yeah, because they should be winning this pretty comfortably. Maybe not like a forty plus because Richmond know how to hang in there, but as a springboard, yeah. I'll give you that. Other big question: How many tins do you reckon Dusty could have and play in this game? Before the game. Well, it's like a super, super oh. sub. No, just hang out. Well, he's, he's not like, even back. He's not back. Is he in New Zealand still? I don't even know. He's having um, tins in New Zealand. Who knows? Maybe it's a private jet over. I reckon he could have 12. I can... 12 beers. That's a yeah, lot. 12. <laughs> 12? Yeah, 12. Let's get out there, get a couple of snacks. Uh, I'm going pies by 14. Ooh. I think this is a gross, yep. just ugly yeah. game. Yeah, pies by 20. I agree with you, Jim. I'm going to go Collingwood by 28. They've got a lot more class and experience than Richmond. They should be winning this pretty comfortably. Much better game after yes. that. 3.20 p.m. at the SCG. The Sydney Swans on top of the ladder and the Flying Bulldogs. Uh, the Swans are 13.5 point favourites. The overrun is 177.5. The Swans are first in offence and defence in the AFL. First. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah, they have. Uh, gee, do you think that fits the profile of a flag contender? I are reckon. In, are they in the premiership window? They might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to What's hear their pressure the gauge? I need to know their pressure <laughs> gauge. <laughs> pressure gauge that no one understands. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, no one knows. Uh, the dogs is. are fourth and fifth, however. So that's actually really, really, really good as well. Yep. So with the Swans, the big question for them will just sort of float around about you're at home. Mm -hmm. That was a tough loss to the Lions. Uh, we've spoken about their extremely close losses this year, which is, what is it? All four of their losses have come by a combined 10 points. Yep, correct. The last three by a combined five. It's just silly. It's brutal. It's just silly. So the dogs, after proving, yeah, we can go down to GMHBA and muck it up in the mud against the catch, can they do it up in Sydney? That's the big question. Can they do it up north? They can, and there are a few outs as well if we want to touch on for the oh, Swans. Good. Well, obviously Look. the Swans lose Papley because he's out for That is a, a massive month. out. Uh, Dane Rampy was out injured as well. He was subbed off. Yep. In come Callum Mills, though. He That's a good nice in, yeah. Which is nice. Sam Wicks, Caleb Mitchell, Aaron Francis, and Laddams. That is such a random in. And um, Laddams. Hay Haywood not out as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's, we a, that's a handy out. Yeah. yeah, very handy. Still no uh, friend of the program, Cheeks. James wrote on yeah, Robot. Bring that, they're just fine-tuning him. They'll yeah, get him for the right. Don't worry. Be fine. They're just fine-tuning <laughs> his beautiful flowing hair. Yes. I like that. Uh, the dogs bring back Oscar Baker. One of the great gingers. Caleb Daniel. Riley Garcia and Liam Jones. Liam Not Jones is a big one because he was really changes. good before. Be interesting to see how Jones goes with uh, Rory Lobb. Yeah, two lanky guys that want to take marks every time. Yeah, yeah it'll be interesting. interesting. Yeah. Rebirth of Brian Lake. Who knows? No, uh, that's a big Riley problem. Sanders is out. Managed. Interesting. Um, that's weird. You got some stats for a stats man? Uh, I hope so. Uh, Sydney have won seven of the last eight home games. Uh, as you mentioned, three of the last four losses uh, by a total of 10 points, and that's brutal. Swans have beaten the Dogs, though, in four of the last five meetings. Uh Swans fans absolutely hate the dogs, as Alex does on this show, just from a grand final and a few other things that have happened yep. along the way. So they'll be fired up at home. If this was at Marvel, I'd Alex be Alex hates? hates Wait, yeah. Alex, <laughs> Alex hates something? A lot of Sydney I, fans That's do. not like the fun-loving Alex. Well, yeah, well, what the hell? He's very chill. He's completely cool. Everybody likes him. Just a shout-out to him because he would have wanted to put some hate on the, onto the dog. So yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't stand him sometimes either. So stuff him. But you can't stand Alex? <laughs> no, the, oh, and the, and the dogs. Yeah, and, and, the dogs. and Alex. Yeah, we'll oh, I meant the dogs. Got and it. Alex. <laughs> Jamara has kicked two plus in <laughs> seven of the last eight. He's hit a bit of consistency. He has. That's kind yeah. of nice. He's Can been he do really it on the road? That's the big question because I feel like he's played most of those eight games either at GMHBA mm. or Marvel. Yep. Uh, I would love to see Jamara just get off the chain a little bit. He's such a crazy talent. The thing is the dogs, they've won two on the trot. They can't win three. Can they win three? That's not how they roll. Can they? I'm going to go the Swans by 14. I think it's a Ooh. bit closer than we expect. I think the midfield of the dogs – Really, really pressures this Sydney team into, especially especially if there's a slow start again. I think that's the sort of team the dogs that can get up early, yep. and then probably eventually get run down by the Swans. But the way that the dogs are playing, they might keep their noses in front by you know a little bit for a big chunk of this game. So I think this would be a cracker on Sunday. Yeah, afternoon. Like can't wait. What about you, Leo? <laughs> I think Swans by seven. I actually agree. I think Dogs will get off to a fast start, but Sydney will come back and do enough to get over the line. Oh, yeah. I don't mind that. don't mind that. I'm going Swans by 20. I think they're going to do this pretty comfortably. Dogs just can't have a consistent performance for three games in a row. Brody Grundy loves playing at home as well. I just had a look. Last time he had 15 disposals, 46 hitouts against the Dogs, and that Jeez. was against uh, Tim English, I'm guessing. Jeez. Uh, so that even though Tim English has been English playing really well. He's been a little well, bit down this year. Uh, he has been he down this year. He's been talked about enough. Two weeks ago, he's he was been really good. good. Still, yeah, he's yeah. been good, but he has been down. So I think Brody Grundy's going to be a just lift this in his sponsor line. All Australian Ruckman last year as well. Tim yes, English. yes. Uh, these two teams did play 
in May mm. of last week, around 11. Yep. So um, it was the third quarter where the Swans just blew the they doors open them. in yes. that Marvel game. Mm -hmm. Dogs were coming back, and I think there were a few interesting there was firing some, decisions. There was that game, yeah, so, like, yeah. But Sydney were the better side. Yep. Uh, I think the Swans have a very, very nice bounce back, but this game should be awesome. And they It'll be a great game. Just, just eke it out. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, Adelaide Hawthorne. Over there at the Adelaide Oval, it's a hard game. 4.40 p.m., over under 164.5, and the Hawks are one-and-a-half-point favourites, Leo. Explain yourself. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't make, yourself. I didn't make the line, Jim, but uh, they're in good form, of course. Yeah, amazing yeah. form, yeah. Well, ins and outs for this one. You have for the Crom, out go Jordan Butts, Jordan Dawson, and Nick Murray, all pretty tough ones as well. Yeah, those are big Those outs. are bit massive outs. In comes Chase Jones, Ball 8. Bolazzi, <laughs> James Bolace, uh, Tex Walker back in as well. Dan oh, Curtin has been named. Curtin in. I like that. Love that. Is on the interchange bench. Though. Josh Worrell. Uh, Worrell the and Ned Henry in for the Hawks on the extended bench as well. Cam McKenzie, ha Harry Morrison, and Jack Gunston. Yep. Surely so, Gunston's not playing. You don't need, you don't need Gunston. Fiftieth. Gunston would not. Do you think this? I don't is think. Well? I don't think he doesn't gonna... fit into that fast pace like. Well, he did for running. a bit when we. Mm. first got on the winning show. I don't think we're going to make any changes. Yeah. I don't, like, Especially when you smash calling. Yeah. I think he, he can adapt to it if okay. he's deep. Yep. Don't get him up the ground. <laughs> yeah, don't get him up. He's keep too him, slow. Keep him in the goal square. Yep. I don't mind that. Stats? Uh, stats uh, yeah, a few stats. Uh, Hawthorne have won seven of their last eight matches, covered the line in ten of the last 11. They're, Not bad. You could say that they're the most consistent uh, team over the last couple well, of I months. I think I saw I'd something say. recently on Channel 7 posted it that it was um, – since round 11, the most informed teams, it was Brisbane first and Hawthorne second. Yeah, that's so, unbelievable. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought that. Grand final. The yeah. Lee Matthews Bowl. Yeah. Great. Actually, back Lee. Well, you need a wild card for the Hawks this year, I reckon. They might just miss out of that, that final spot. Uh, Hawks haven't won in the Adelaide for three seasons, which isn't too bad compared to some other teams. Should have won early in the should year. Should have won earlier in the year uh, with God that comeback. It. Adelaide 4, 5, and 1 at home this year, which is so they've been really bad. Four, five, and 1. They've been very doing? inconsistent there. They'll oh. beat GWS and then lose to Richmond. Yeah. So you got no idea. Yeah, horrible. It's bonkers. Uh, and then, yeah, beat Carlton and Essendon at Marvel. Yeah. They should play. Uh, maybe Adelaide and Port Adelaide actually, should play. What is Adelaide Marvel? doing? Can we just like ask? Is that Can the big question? What are Adelaide like, doing? That's, that's actually a pretty good <laughs> big question. Because I, what are they doing? At all. I said they're top four. <laughs> at their best, they look, oh, my God, this team's amazing. They're going to make but the finals. Even, even oh. then, like, they'll win some games. And you're like, they didn't play that well, but they just like got over. I don't know. What's going on at home? <laughs> what's going on for Watching that Carlton game, they – Looks so fast. Yeah. And when I think Even we saw them at Gather Round. Yes. They looked they looked like a whole different team. It was like, what is what is going on? Mm. That I was the first no game idea. actually. Yeah. Exactly. All the crowds like booing. They're like, what are we watching yeah. here? Melbourne tore them to shreds. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're, they're gonna just fire Matthew Nixon to the sun. <laughs> yeah. <Like, it's, laughs> they might. But with Fog next to Tex, as well as my man Riley Thrillthorpe. Yes. Uh they do just feel kind of imposing at times. Yeah, definitely. Dawson out really, really hurts. There was the uh, talk that Crouch could make a return at some point this year as well, which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to see Dan Curtin get more of a run. Yeah, I think that. You're, well, their season's done. Yeah, they, you might as well give a young guys give a, a few, few games. I'm going to take the Crom in this one. By really? I think they're going to play spoiler. That was going to be okay. the big question. Can they play spoiler again against like randomly decent Like teams? Hawks who are trying to push for finals. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hawks, I don't think they'll be uh, – what is it? They haven't – Won at Adelaide over three years. Yeah, they've only played like five games there or something, but still, it's a it's a no, uh, hurdle. Yeah. So I'm going to go the crop. Yeah. I think Hawks by 11. This is the second time I've I was tipped say, on the show. Oh, yeah. I didn't tip us against North I know. or West Coast <laughs> what are you or doing? Richmond. I tipped us against Brisbane of so all teams. So the fact that they're on this win streak... You haven't tipped them, so now that you tipped them, yeah, or... get on Crom. Yeah, Crumb, boys, <laughs> you're done. Hawks by what? Stats boy. Uh, I'm going Hawks by 13. I think they'll get the job done. They've been really good. All right. Good one. <laughs> Some very interesting, like, just arm wrestle games. Yeah, this week, it right? is. It's like it's a hard really tipping close week. game. Well, I think yeah. it's not exactly a hard zipping week if nah. you sort of think about it. But it feels like it each is. of the games could be really interesting. Yeah. on the, in their own right, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, except maybe that Pies Richmond one. I'm going <laughs> to that. I, I reckon it'll be a bit of fun. Of course, it'll be chaos. We all awesome. yeah, the G chaos ball. Let's do some big calls for round twenty. Oh, let's get three out of three. Come on, <laughs> Charlie <laughs> gets off the chain of boot six. Have your pick of which Charlie. Yeah, I was going to say which Charlie. Oh, I thought you, yeah. Because Mal wow, or Cameron. Who knows? <laughs> Cameron or Dixon. Could be Dicker. Who knows? It's, <laughs> it's going to be Charlie nuts. Dixon. Oh, Charlie boy. Dixon could be. I like that. It, that you should, that's any Charlie to kick six. Any Charlie oh, to kick six. Like it should be a bet that I could put That on. could be great, any yeah. Any Charlie to kick six. <laughs> that would be good. It's not bad. Uh, yeah, I think 
It would be very, very typical of Carlton to play another close game against Port. Yep. I would absolutely dearly love just to see them kick their heads in, though. Yep. You know? And Charlie is the sort of dude who goes, uh, what, kicks 3-7, kick 4, I want to say, last week against the Roos in the end? Yes. Sprayed a couple, obviously. If he just has one of those games where he's like, oh, six is pretty easy. I've actually got this one sort of on point, bang, six, under the roof. Let's go. Yep. And uh, Q Clash, I don't know, maybe Chucky Cameron gets off the chain as well. Maybe don't both Charlies it. will kick six. So any, any Charlie to kick six, I really like that. All right, so that's boy. Any Nate to kick four plus. Is he the only <laughs> Nate? Is he the only uh, Nate, Nate Caddy? Yeah, I think so. Well, I was trying to try something there that probably didn't go as well as I thought. Nate Caddy, four plus. He's been <laughs> building cook. into... Let him cook. <laughs> Let him cook. Boys, I'm trying something. Oh, the trying. kitchen's on fire. Ah. <laughs> Nate Caddy, four plus. He's been building into it. I think he's an absolute... He's going to build into, into an absolute star. Yeah, he's so athletic for his cool. size. He's got the great hair. I like his hair. Something, I do something, like his something hair. Something about it. Uh, Langford and uh, Peter Wright. He becomes Sounds the like he's got a crush. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> let's take him and... Uh, what's his name? Chad Walter. Except Chad Walter's hair's gone now. So it's a bit sad. We're just boys. We're and my, my, my <laughs> crush actually us. plays every week. But anyway. Um, Langford and... That was uh, below the belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Caddy also doesn't play every week. Oh, he's, he's going to play like, every week from he's now. He's like four games. Ah, don't worry about it. Hurry up. <laughs> Let me just say one thing. <laughs> Langford and Peter Wright, they'll take pressure off him. Uh, I think he's going to kick four plus. He gets the third defender instead of having that second or first defender. He's an absolute freak. So four plus is not out of the realm. I don't of... mind that against the Saints. It's and against sort of the like Saints, that weird, yeah. weird thing where it's like, yeah, cool. It feels like one of them will get off the chain. Yeah. And Nate Caddy may as well. They've got Dougal and Wilkie to take care of uh, Langford. Then you've got Peter. who else would be on Webster possibly. Webster probably. And yeah. he's a bit too small for Caddy as well. So I like it. Yeah, Caddy's going like to have a field day. Leo! Messiah, Wanganine, Miller, 25 disposals oh, and a Nassim. goal against Essendon. And I just feel like he's been going under the radar a little he's bit. He's having and a great year. I reckon he's just going to remind us all how good he is. Okay. Uh, the, the young little star for the Saints. And banking five plus I goals. Like he has a kick five in the last like three I've weeks. Put this in, I, I literally it. put this in as we were talking about Mel, uh, okay. Melbourne, Brisbane's uh, back line. If you've got Joey Danaher listed <laughs> at fullback and no other fullback in the team, Ben King, if you don't kick five, you are a, a disgrace. Oh, bang, one. right down the barrel. He's going to have a field day. <laughs> no, but like Joe Danaher, just, that's just my game. He's not starting there. He's not starting there, no. <laughs> it's I, actually, funny. Like, I do like either, actually, maybe this should be any Gold Coast son named Ben to kick five. Who else? Oh, Ben Long. Long. Oh, well, Ainsworth is still injured, I think. But, yeah. um, they have a lot of Bens. Just like, you've got too many Bens. <laughs> what are you just... <laughs> Okay. You have too many bends. What about Please get rid of two of them. <laughs> any two? I'm to not kick, a crack. <laughs> any two to uh, kick five. <laughs> any two. It's not even as well. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Keep an eye on. What are we keeping an eye on in round 20? Last week, I think we nailed most of them. We did. Uh, yeah. Lions, are they for real, for real? They win it. They can make it back to back grand finals. Everyone's Proving talking about wrong. that now, yeah. Uh, if Frio can reassert its de- defensive dominance against their bunny team, they did. Suns on the road. We Cooked were right. Yeah. Crom size. It worked. Yes. Dogs fight. They did. <laughs> Pies Hawks, the Giddy Cup, it was! And, and it was Guinea's best yeah. ever game. Bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang! Nailed him! Yeah. Nice. This week. <laughs> We're going to nail it again. We are this week, back. just keep an eye on the Blues defense. Like This is like their biggest, like, just... It's their wi- biggest worry at the moment. Absolute yeah. worry. Mm. Uh, it's the only thing. It's basically clearances and defense. Yeah, you've got Pito back. You've got no TDK. Uh, defensively and the clearance game is going to be huge. Can they back it up after five days? It's a tough one, but defensively, if they have like one of those defensive games where they go, oh, I'm just going to rebound everything. Shush, go away, go away. They could smash the power. They could. Cats at uh, Tassie? Yes. Interesting to see what happens there. They have played us a couple of times last couple of years and beaten us pretty easily, but this is a different North team. So Gold well, Coast at home again versus yep. Brisbane injuries. Mm. I want to see how this Brisbane team plays. It's going to be very, very be a fun fascinating. Game, I reckon. Uh, Pies, defense and offense. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just pies in general. Just pies. But really, it's like, can the offense fire for the pies against Richmond? Can Mason Cox have an influence down there? Bombers response. Simple as that. Keep an eye on that. Mm-hmm. The Bombers response. Can they bounce back from just the brutal gut-kicking <laughs> games that they've just coughed up this year? The Saints, look, if there's a team that you just want to put to the sword, it's them. Yeah. If you can just do it, thumbs up, Bombers. Frigo's D without Pierce. Yeah. Against this West Coast team that can be frisky <laughs> at word. times. They haven't frisky. been frisky of late. <laughs> no. That's no. been the problem. Waterman and uh, Alan McGovern. And and McGovern, McGovern and like, that's kind of nice. Uh, and then, of course, Sydney against this ferocious dogs midfield. Yes. Because, I don't know, when you take the fight to Sydney, it's like the way that they sort of respond is fascinating because we saw them overcome big, big, big deficits or against the Blues and the Cats at home, I think, this year. Yes. Uh, the dogs... 
could be a, a similar sort of team where they could get off to a really fast start. Sometimes we've seen that this year. So I don't know. Let's see what we can get from Sydney. Anything else there, gentlemen? No, I think you've no, covered for most me. of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, nice Jim. <laughs> you were pretty good last week, so we'll, we'll let you cook again. <laughs> Supercoach, thoughts, vibes, anything else? Like how many trades have we got left? Leo. Uh, I have not looked at my team this week, but I have one trade left. And, and two I, boosts. <laughs> yeah, two boosts. That is the best thing ever. I need to talk to Al about sending over some boosts for you guys. Can you send it to me? Yeah. I'll send you one each. I'll pay you. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, Stats boy, any vibes on trades? I've got two trades left. Uh, I'm just having a quick look at who's people. I'm tempted to bring in Dylan Moore, other, but he's so like up and down. A lot of people are bringing in Ben Keys, which I've been surprised about. The other one's Adam Trelaw. He's under 600k for the form that he's in, uh, and he's what he's projected. I don't, I can't see he's projected here. But last round he got 148, so he's under 600k. I think that's a really good yeah. uh, player to come in. Nice one, vice captain, captaincy thoughts this week. Uh, I need to have a quick look at that. So Potentially about, Walsh. Let's have a look. We talked about Walsh and Butters. Walsh I has think, been so down what, though. I think uh, Al and the Supercoach team wrote on Code Sports today was that in the Port versus Carlton game, like Cripps has got a really good projection. He's mm -hmm. been absolutely flying, no doubt. Uh, but Butters has struggled against the Blues the last couple of times, yes. and isn't that great at Marvel mm. randomly? I'm that's, like, oh, yeah, that's sure. weird. So my thought initially was Butters VC into Dacos captain, but I'm now like Cheese has been named. There was a bit of a query about him earlier today. There was, yeah. I might actually maybe throw the VC on Sheasel. I don't mind Saturday, that. Early Saturday. Geelong Arbor. get a few forward entries. Sheasel and then into Dacos against the Tigers on yeah. Sunday. I like the Sheasel call. I'm also considering Tom Green if it is wet because he just loves getting in in and under yeah. contested possessions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind Tom. Uh, who wins Freo play actually? I'm going to go uh, Frio. I'll go Caleb Sarong. I think he will have another big game against the uh, as Eagles. As captain or vice? Uh, as vice. vice. And then I need to figure out who's my – oh, Bont as captain. I, oh, I know yeah, it's against yeah. Sydney, but I feel like – Bont is just games, always the safe. Yeah, the so Bont is the safe option. Yeah, yeah I could coming. actually go Sarong into Dacos. I'd feel pretty good Or Dacos. Oh, Dacos has been very down, though, lately. Yeah, it is Richmond. Still got a ton yeah. last week, I think. True, 106. Nice one. There you go. Uh Use your trades wisely because I and think people boost. who trade it out How gone left? are sitting there going, oh, God, now he's back. Oh, what have I done? Yeah, but he's and not going to score misses well, out as well. It's tough. I've still got my two. Uh, nice. We'll see what – I'm basically just – yeah, reserved for injuries, I think. So yeah, see what happens. There you go. That's it for AFL today for this week. We will be back. And when I say we, I mean they. I'm on holidays for next week in a bit. Uh, back, back on, on Sunday fun. night yes. to wrap up round 20. And that'll be really fun. These games should be awesome. So enjoy that. Uh, thanks to the Ding Guy for jumping on, Leo. Always a pleasure. And the Stats Boy. Sometimes a pleasure. You're the right shark at the moment because you're on my right. <laughs> uh, remember to smash a like for all of our shows and see all the fun stuff that we do. Uh, you can check out the AFL Today Show, of course, on YouTube, Facey, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Now on Facey, you can actually check it out at Aussie Rules Today. Yes. Not bad, huh? See, up here for Not thinking, bad, down huh? there for dancing. <laughs> Cricket, da Cricket Today Show, uh, Cricket Today Podcast, rather, Football Today Podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and hold all tickets as well. Get around all of those on your podcast apps. Get around them like Craig Bradley's flying hair down the wing of the MCG, just delivering a footy on the outstretched arms of Sticks Coonahan. Love Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Just. You sound like Bruce McAvoy. Just what I dream delicious. about sometimes. <laughs> delicious, delicious, delicious. <laughs> just caresses it down his throat. <laughs> All right, that's it. We'll Bruce catch you later this week on Sunday night for a massive wrap-up episode of Round 20 featuring these guys and not me. Uh, for more I felt today, check out all the socials, boom. And in the meantime, look after yourselves, footy's back, and check out the NBA Australia live stream on Saturday to watch the film. Yes. Catch you then. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.